But my favorite tool in the shop is the bandsaw. And if there's one thing I could improve on it, it would be... And this has to be possible. We have we, 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 we have to have the technology to do this, where you just put on a blade and it automatically tensions itself and it automatically centers itself on, mm. on the wheels and then you just go, right? We, if we, if can, we can put a man on the moon. <laughs> if we can make an app where you have to go around the country and look for Pokemon, we can make a bandsaw <laughs> that you can easily change a blade quickly and it sets it up for you. Now, ever since David made these comments about how great it'd be if there was a solution that made it easier, faster to change bandsaw blades, I've been thinking about what could possibly be done about it. My first idea was a bandsaw with two blades mounted on, on it at the same time, so that if you wanted to resaw, you raise the guard on the resaw blade, uh, do your resawing, and then switch to the other one to cut curves. And then with the help of comments on that first video, I improved on this by envisioning a bandsaw that had blades mounted on two cartridges that can swing in, uh, one for resawing, one for curve cutting. Uh, and, and I think this is better, but still not good enough to take the next step. Uh, this is going to be an expensive frame. It's still four wheels. Um, with the complexity, it's just going to cost almost as much as, as having two bandsaws. And, and that's the current way to deal with this problem. If you don't want slow bandsaw blade changes, you just buy a second bandsaw. So a solution has to be substantially better than just having two bandsaws in your shop uh, to be really worth doing anything about. But some people did comment about the blade itself. Can we have a double-sided blade with resaw teeth on one side and curve cutting teeth on the other? That doesn't really work because you need a back bearing guide uh, with and with teeth on both sides, you'd just be chewing it up. But that did get me thinking about the blade itself and how can you perform both resawing and curve cutting with one blade. And uh, I think I've got a promising idea. So the blade that's going to perform both functions is just a standard quarter inch, four tooth per inch, flex back blade meant for cutting curves. Uh, but I made one change to the saw to allow it to resaw. Now this thin blade on its own won't track nearly as well for resawing as a thick blade will, so I'm adding these pins to guide the workpiece and really take the place of, of what a wide, the back of a wide blade would be doing. It's a little trickier on the bottom because I need to set it up so that I can get it out of the way when I don't want it. So I mounted it to my saw and I can just move it up and down out of the way when I want to. So with these both in place, those guide pins act to keep the workpiece really straight uh, and actually give a snugger fit in the cut than, than the back of a thick blade would. And even on a large workpiece, I can, I can uh, do resawing. This is about 8 inches of mahogany and I resawed very well. I got a really nice straight cut. And then when I want to cut some curves, I just drop that bottom pin down, set the top guide so that the pin is just above the workpiece because I don't want it to engage for curves, uh, and then cut tight curves with the same blade. So this worked. I honestly believe that I'll be able to resaw and cut curves without switching blades from now on. Uh, and that's true despite the, the guide posts being something that I put together in the shop and this blade just kind of being the best uh, thing that I could find on the market to perform both functions. Now if you actually started from scratch designing a blade meant to serve both these purposes, it probably perform even better. Just as a guess, I'd say maybe a little bit less set in the teeth uh, maybe three teeth per inch instead of four teeth per inch and maybe even thinner blade would be what I'd try first But some playing around I bet you could find an optimized set of parameters for a blade to be able to do both curves uh, And resawing with the assistance of the guide posts speaking of the guide posts um, The the pins that I use probably not ideal. I'd say 
uh, some kind of a, a plate would probably more, be more robust and last longer. And, and instead of bolting it to the frame of the saw, building it into the guides themselves with some kind of a flip or a screw that, that you use to raise and lower the, the bottom guide, uh, that, that'd be better than what I put together in my shop. But this was good enough to show that it really seems to work. So this is an open innovation project. Anyone, any company who wants to take this idea and run with it uh, is free to do so, doesn't have to pay me any, any royalties. This is just kind of a way of saying thank you to everyone. Um, I've got more ideas than, than I can act on and it's just kind of good to get them, get them out there. So I hope that happens. I hope that um, you know maybe a saw blade company and, and a company that makes uh, blade guides team up and put together an optimal combination um, and certainly if they do that I'll, I'll uh, show it off on my channel because I think that'd be really cool. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks everyone.